हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ऑनलाइन कोर्स ऑफ मैकेनिकल मेजरमेंट एंड मेट्रोलॉजी माई सेल्फ अभिषेक त्रिवेदी फ्रॉम मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट एट एल जे इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग एंड टेक्नोलॉजी वी आर डिस्कसिंग फोर्स टॉर्क प्रेशर स्ट्रेन एंड टेम्परेचर मेजरमेंट्स एंड इट्स मेजरिंग इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी हैव कम्प्लीटेड अवर टॉपिक नेम्ड एज फोर्स मेजरमेंट इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी हैव डिस्कस द थ्री डिफरेंट लोडिंग सेल्स द फर्स्ट वन दैट इज अ हाइड्रोलिक लोड सेल न्यूमेटिक लोड सेल एंड स्ट्रिंग गेज लोड सेल इन पर्टिक्युलर हाइड्रोलिक लोड सेल एंड न्यूमेटिक लोड सेल वी हैव डिस्कस हाउ द सिस्टम विल वर्क एंड वॉट इज द बेजिक डिफरेंस बिहाइंड द हाइड्रोलिक एंड न्यूमेटिक लोड सेल वॉट इज द बेजिक क्राइटेरिया फॉर द सिलेक्शन ऑफ पर्टिकुलर हाइड्रोलिक लोड सेल और पर्टिकुलरली न्यूमेटिक लोड सेल इन सम केसेज द हाइड्रोलिक लोड सेल इज वेरी मच प्रिफरेबल बट इन सम केसेज द न्यूमेटिक वन इज द सुपीरियर दैन द हाइड्रोलिक लोड सेल then we have discussed a basic concept of the strain gauge load cell and how it will directly effect on the measurement what we are using we are using the equation r is equal to rho l by a where r that is the resistance of the particular material rho that is the resistivity of the material l that is the length of the given specimen and a that is the cross sectional area of the given specimen by using the equation if there is any chance of change in the length if there is any chance of change in the shape cross sectional area then by using those we can measure the value of the resistance because the resistivity of the material is directly depends on the materialistic property it is not change so using this particular equation you can check the value of the resistance and we have already calibrated the resistance in terms of forces so by checking the value of the resistance or we can say by checking the change in the resistance you can check the value of the force which is applied over the cylindrical strain gauge load cell today we are going to start our second concept measurement of the torque torque measuring instruments and the basic concept of the shaft power so let us start with the torque the first one that is the introduction to measurement of the torque or we can say shaft power now what do you mean by torque and the shaft power first of all let us understand the concept torque or the shaft power if the force is applied over the rotational part or we can say if the rotational reaction force has been generated then the combination or we can say then the effect of then the effect of those particular rotational reactive force is known as a torque and the shaft power is the power which is available over the shaft of the motor or the engine or the pump or the compressor or any of the object whatever the power is available over the shaft is known as a shaft power do the shaft power is a consumption in the nature or is a production in the nature it means suppose you are calculating the shaft power on of the compressor or the pump then it is known as a consumption power because the instrument will consume some amount of the power in terms of shaft power whereas the power which is available on the engine shaft then it is known as a production nature power because it will be produced by the engine and the whatever the power is produced it is useful to run such different different instruments then it is known as a shaft power as well now for the measurement of the torque measurement of torque is required with the determination of the power developed or consumed by the rotating part the torque may be measured in terms of the reaction force and the arm length or the angular twist is known as the value of the torque t we can write this as a torque t is equal to we can write torque t is equal to reactive force f into the arm length l this is become the torque t now we are going to discuss the classification of torque and the power measurement techniques the torque and the power measurement we can say the torque and the shaft power measurement techniques are classified in terms of dynamometers in terms of the application of the dynamometer in terms of the basic concept or we can say the core idea behind the formation of dynamometer so first of all let us understand what is a dynamometer dynamometer is the instrument which is useful for the measurement of the torque or the for the measurement of the shaft power is known as a dynamometer as we are discussing the load cell in the case of the force measuring instruments so whatever the instrument is useful for the measurement of the force then it is known as a load cell same way whatever the instrument which is useful for the measurement of the torque for the measurement of the power shaft power then it, the instrument is known as dynamometer the measurement techniques are totally depends on the types of dynamometer so here we are going to classify the dynamometers in the different different categories 
the first one that is the absorption type dynamometer in the absorption type dynamometer what is happening suppose the dynamometer is running and attached with the shaft suppose here the motor or we can say engine is working the shaft will rotating in one direction then the particularly absorption uh, then the particularly absorption type dynamometer is attached suppose this is the absorption type dynamometer which is attached to the rotating shaft it will be absorb all the energy generated by the shaft it means the dynamometer will try to break the particular motion of the shaft the absorption type dynamometer will try to break the particular shaft then it is known as a absorption type dynamometer once it will start to applying the brake the friction will be generated the heat will be generated and the speed of the shaft will be decreases the speed of the shaft will be decreases once the speed of the shaft will be tends to zero and becomes zero then we can say that whatever the frictional resistance is required to stop down the particular rotating shaft then the same amount of the force the same amount of the reactive force will be generated by the same shaft once it is working on the ideal actual condition this is the absorption type dynamometer name suggest absorption means you are supposed to absorb the energy which is generated by using the shaft power the basic example of absorption type dynamometer are the prony brake dynamometer then rope brake dynamometer you can check from the dynamometer there is some brake then hydraulic dynamometer and the eddy current dynamometer then the second one that is the transmission type dynamometer transmission type dynamometer in which we are simply transmitting the power which is generated suppose this is a shaft it is rotating in the one direction then what we are supposed to do we are simply transmitting the power to some another arrangement and this particular arrangement is useful to measure the shaft power then this is known as a transmission type dynamometer the dynamometer itself is not going to measure the power it will transfer the power to some another mechanical setup in the transmission type dynamometer the first one that is the belt transmission dynamometer as the name suggests by using the belt pulley arrangement you are supposed to transfer the shaft power from the one position to another position and then we are going to measure those part power then epicyclic dynamometer the epicyclic dynamometer is also known as the basic dynamometer which is used the epicyclic gear train once again we are using the transmission system as a gear train the gear train is used to transfer the shaft from the one position to another position transfer the shaft power from one position to another position and the third one that is the torsion type dynamometer in the torsion type dynamometer we are simply transfer the motion in terms of angle of twist from the one shaft to another shaft and then you are measuring the angle of twist and you are measuring the particular value of the shaft power then the last category or we can see the last technique for the measurement of the power that is the driving type dynamometer the driving type dynamometer contains a single application is a electric cradle dynamometer the instrument is totally based on the electric circuitry and the sensors which is useful for the measurement of the shaft power so guys this is the basic classification of the torque and the shaft power or power measuring techniques power measuring methods or the different different instrument which are useful for the measurement of the power shaft power now we are going to discuss prony brake dynamometer as the name suggest as the name suggest we are using the brake dynamometer it means the instrument will directly apply the brake the instrument will directly apply the brake over the shaft power and due to the application of the brake the speed of the shaft will tends to zero and it becomes zero when it will achieve the value zero then whatever the resistive force or we can say whatever the frictional reaction will be required to cut down the speed to the zero value we are checking those values and we are calculating the value of the power which is generated at the end of the shaft the figure shows the basic structure of the prony brake dynamometer the prony brake dynamometer itself contains arm extended arm at the end of the arm we are supposed to provide some sort of dead weight in the initial condition the dead weight has been provided then the brake blocks are provided these are the two wooden brake brake blocks are provided both the blocks are attached with the nut and bolt assembly then 
द पुली इज गिवन और वी कैन से द पुली और द अरेंजमेंट ऑफ द शाफ्ट पावर ट्रांसमिशन इज गिवन वॉट वी आर सपोज टू डू वी आर अटैचिंग द शाफ्ट टू द पुली एंड द पुली विल डायरेक्टली अटैच टू द ब्रेकिंग ब्लॉक्स नाउ इन द आइडियल कंडीशन सपोज देर इज नो एनी पुली देर इज नो एनी Uh, there is no any shaft or there is no any internal component. The green component is not available inside the pony brake dynamometer. Then there might some chance due to the weight, the arm will be lifted slightly. In the ideal condition, due to the weight of the blocks, wooden blocks over here, the moment has been generated, and arm will be lifted slightly. To resist the lifting of the arm, we are supposed to provide some sort of the dead weight over here. The dead weight is useful. to maintain the position of the arm in the downward direction properly so this is the basic requirement of the dead weight now what is happening once the pulley has been attached and we are closing the brake blocks by the mechanical fastening let's say screw and nut methods then the particular pulley will try to turn itself inside the braking blocks here the spring has been provided here again the spring has been provided and what you are supposed to do we are simply squeezing the internal pulley inside the braking blocks we are simply squeezing the pulley or we can say we are simply squeezing the shaft inside the wooden blocks for using the squeezing method we are increasing the value of the weight over here once we are trying to increase the value of the weight over here it will directly generate the dead weight effect and the momentum will be generated the moment will be to down the arm slightly it will generate to down the arm slightly it will generate to down the arm slightly and once this particular setup has been generated uh, it will directly try to squeeze the particular shaft and the shaft will be resisted by the wooden blocks the frictional force has been generated less uh, we can say the heat amount has been generated and due to the frictional force and the heat the speed of the shaft will start reducing by increasing the value of the dead weight w we are supposed to reduce the speed of the particular wheel and once we are achieving the speed of the shaft as a zero then whatever the dead weight uh, we can say whatever the weight is applied over here we are simply balancing the weight with the length l and by using the momentum equation by using the momentum what we are supposed to check we are checking that whatever the load is there with the load is available at the length l then whatever the reaction has been generated with the radius of r we are using this particular equation and by checking this particular equation you are supposed to check what is the reaction or we can say what is the resistive forces used and by using this particular force you are supposed to find the value of the torque you are supposed to find the value of the shaft power which is available at the end of the shaft so guys this is the basic concept of the prony brake dynamometer the particular value of the torque or we can say the particular value of the torque which is generated inside the dynamometer is checked by using the balancing of the different different forces we can say that if i have to calculate by using the dead weight concept then i can calculate the whatever the torque is generated the torque is equal to w into l where the w that is the known weight which we are putting on the end of the arm and l that is the length of the arm to the center line of the rotating shaft we can calculate from the f into r where f that is the frictional resistance which is generated frictional force which is generated opposite to the rotation of the wheel and r that is the radius of the particular wheel on which the force has been generated uh, we can say from the center at far distance we are finding the value of the frictional resistance the distance is known as r radius of the wheel so guys this by using this particular torque setup by using this particular equation you are supposed to measure the value of the torque generated inside the prony brake dynamometer once the shaft will be stopped once the motion of the shaft will be zero once the speed of the shaft will be zero we are supposed to check the value of the w l and the f and r but there is a drawback behind this particular prony brake dynamometer the major drawback is generation of the friction because of the generation of the friction the high amount of the heat has been generated and whatever the heat is generated the heat is directly transfer from the pulley to the wooden blocks also due to the continuous contact between the wooden blocks and the metallic wheel it will generate some sort of resistance it will generate some sort of resistive force and according to tribology theory it will generate some sort of the wear and tear on the both the faces the face of the pulley as well as the face of the wooden blocks 
but the pulley will not find such amount of the wear and tear but the wooden blocks will find a drastic amount of the wear and tear and because of this wear and tear there might some chance after use of after use of this particular prony break dynamometer up to certain time frame we have to remove the blocks blocks we have to change the brake blocks for proper maintenance and for proper working of the prony break dynamometer so guys here we are winding our lecture this is the prony break dynamometer what we have discussed what we have discussed today we have started with the concept of the torque what is the torque what is the shaft power then the basic classification of torque measurement techniques in which we have classified the torque measurement technique in the three different categories the first one that is the absorption type dynamometer the second one that is a transmission type dynamometer and the third one that is a driving type dynamometer in the absorption type dynamometer we have discussed the first one that is the prony brake dynamometer and by discussing the prony brake dynamometer we have winded our lecture so that's it for the today from for next lecture we are going to discuss the remaining dynamometer which are absorption type dynamometer like rope brake dynamometer hydraulic and eddy current dynamometer till then thank you